welcome to Scientific Dialogues on the Cardiovascular Continuum channel. For the first video of the channel, Professor Roberto Ferrari is sharing his perspective about the future of medicine focusing on prevention and the use of modern technology to prevent and manage disease. <music> professor Ferrari is an emeritus professor in cardiology at the University of Ferrara. He was the past president of the European Society of Cardiology as well as the World Section of the International Society for Heart Research. He is currently the editor-in-chief of the European Heart Journal Supplement and editorial board member for many international peer-reviewed journals. Hello everybody, I am Roberto Ferrari and I'm very pleased to communicate with you via P2P. Today I will be telling you which are my ideas about the future of medicine and uh, I would like to share my thought on short, medium and long term future of medicine. These are the parts that will influence uh, our future. For sure, electronic health recording, and that will generate many more pragmatic virtual trials, and some of them are already active. The patients will be more at the center of the healthcare system, and uh, so we will uh, be able to really introduce uh, a personalization of medicine. We will be confronted with the genetic revolution and also with digitalization. And of course, we will try to use as much as we can and as better as we can artificial intelligence. The patients will have a much stronger voice in healthcare. They will constitute networks of communication and solidarity. They will even participate to research and in the future they will consider participation to research a sort of civic duty. This is already happening in Sweden, for example, when one-fifth of the patients are joined my healthcare contact system and there are more than one million of contacts or data if prefer every month. Some patients are even donating their DNA. We will have a lot of personalized medicine and this is because the genetic data will identify new protect target and not only protect. That will provide more specific genotypes for diseases. Definitely we will have less chemical chemistry and we will have a more alliance with our own immunity system and I'm sure that the body will produce his own drugs. But genetics is a big issue. That is because there are millions of genomes variants and uh, genetic will provide the massively scaling data which will be difficult to absorb. But also genetic therapy will not happen in a day. And that is because when you administered genetic therapy, you cannot stop it. That will necessitate a long follow-up for safety concern. But imagine that with a single blood testing, we will be able to be informed on the disease that one is at risk for. And this will allow a specific genetic treatment which will be provided to that particular patient. Data, data and data, we will have, we will be submerged of data. The data will be everywhere. And the question is whether the human brain will be able to analyze them. And the second question is also what we are really analyzing. Because there are many questions related to data. How accurate they are? Is the coding correct? Is there any adjudication? At the moment, none. 
we will have uh, we the risk is to have evidence from unselected population and i think that what matters in terms of data is to share them as open as possible and at the same time as close as necessary but of course digital technology will help us and particularly the quantum supremacy this to me is unbelievable because a quantum processor is able to perform a calculation in less than four minutes that would take by summit which is the most advanced classical computer from google 10 years to do so we, we will compress the time from 10 years imagine to four minutes and i strongly believe that google apple and many others will be the future pharma industry artificial intelligence and machine learning this uh, uh, is the time when uh, we have to start to use them and there are a lot of promises and barriers promises that uh, we will improve our diagnostic capacity that the classification of the phenotype will be much better with the help of artificial intelligence as well as the device therapy and the medical therapy and even artificial intelligence can help us with trial design but on the other side of the coin there will be barriers because there will be the possible propagation of an initial error some opaque logic distant from the context and the risk of drift over the time between covariates and outcomes so where is the truth should we really use uh, artificial intelligence should we really invest in artificial intelligence probably the answer is yes but there are doubts even from the father of artificial intelligence such as Geoffrey Hinton he was really the British godfather of artificial intelligence and is warning us against it of course Larry Page is very positive about it and Elon Musk is sometimes positive sometimes negative so really we have to wait and see but definitely sensor, digital and precision medicine will be the future for diagnosis, treatment and delivery. I'm sure that you can see in this X-ray a little, very little, very tiny processor. Well, this processor will be able to identify your blood pressure, your glucose level, cholesterol level, the pollution which is in the air the light exposure the sound exposure everything and that will be integrated in uh, an internet of things that will be elaborated by an artificial intelligence and as soon as your blood pressure will slowly start to increase then uh, a drone will uh, be sent to your home with the right drug in order to avoid uh, blood pressure to increase is this uh, magic is this an illusion no because you can see here these are all the startup which are already working in these directions but also in the future and uh, with the advent of the mega cities there will be very new risk factors and actually we call these risk factors the exposome because we will be more and more exposed to traffic noise to pollution to climate changes we will be exposed to the light pollution and all of this will be strongly affect our life but with the help of sensor we will be able to monitor all of this and not only the classical risk factors which are indicated here but also the new risk factor from the exposome noise pollution light 
but also we will be able to monitor the genetic risk, the virus, and so on. All this information, all this data will be connected to an artificial intelligence and they will be stored in a, what I call a medical control power station. And as soon as some of the risk factors is reaching the level of um, non-normality, there will be an immediate intervention and uh, your doctor will be advised and he will uh, help you in order to maintain well-being and in order to prevent the disease from occurring. So in the future, I think that there will be more emphasis in the prevention than uh, in cure. And that will uh, bring a sort of uh, really healthcare system. Why I'm saying really? Because today we are working in a sick care system and uh, we are alerted when the patients are started to be sick. But tomorrow the world health will be much more important than the world sickness. And the goal will be the maintenance of well-being instead of reacting to an episode, which is what we are doing today. And I am also sure that many of the endpoints of clinical trials will be related to well-being and not necessarily on mortality and hospitalization. No doubt that the doctors will be engaged with the technology as well as the patient and the patients will be 24 hours connected with the expert looking simultaneously at the data and uh, reacting immediately and going back to them immediately. And the experts will be, of course, human beings, but maybe partly also an artificial intelligence. And so this will be a sort of a fly control system but instead of controlling aeroplanes, we'll control patients. So, in conclusion, I strongly believe that the future looks great for the patient first, but also for us, the doctors. Disease can be and will be prevented. Not all of them, but the majority of them will be prevented from occurring. In addition to that, the medical community will be able to capture the, measure, the messages of the body by the sensor. We'll be able to look deeply inside the body with all this new imaging technique. We'll be able to act inside the body in a very integrated way. Also, we will be uh, able to repair some, at least, broken parts of the body by regeneration and eventually we can reprogram completely our body by genetics. All of this is great, but we, and not others, need to drive and to control the changes. And when I'm saying not others, I mean not politicians or not those who are just working with data. So, doctors, let's part of this future. Thank you very much indeed. Dear peers, if you have any interesting or even controversial comments, please feel free to post them or email them to me at kol at p2pmd.net. I will reply to these comments in a special Q&A video next month. Please take 10 seconds to learn how you can be more than just a spectator at P2P. Right now, tens of thousands of healthcare professionals are actually watching this video. You may take this opportunity to post your own cases, best practices, and research data in the comment box underneath the video. So, don't miss out on this chance to make your work known to global peers. If you have any captivating insights that you would like to share with your peers, 
Please email your thoughts to kol at p2pmd.net. Here at P2P, we welcome collaboration with the brightest minds on the planet.